Hello everyone, Tom with Capo Fetish. Today we're going to talk about some great 80s alternative lead-off tracks. I'm going to start off here with a banger from 1980, and that is off one of my all-time favorite albums ever. Definitely a top 10 album of all time. I'm talking about The Pretender's debut album, the song called Precious. This album pretty much started off a whole new listening experience for me. Back when I was 14, I was a few months shy of 15. From here on in, I would listen to nothing but 1980s alternative music throughout that entire decade. This album is very important. This is what kicked off my music appreciation for that whole style of music in the 80s. Martin Chambers on drums, James Honeyman Scott on guitar, Pete Farden on bass, Chrissy Hine on vocals. An amazing album all the way through. Side one is kind of more their rockin' side. Side two is more their poppy side. It all works perfectly. Perfect album, Precious from the Pretenders from 1980. How about the Smiths debut album? Reel Around the Fountain is an amazing opening track and a ballad at that. When a lot of bands were opening up with fast songs during this period, the Smiths opened with a nice ballad, a five minute ballad too. So we got Reel Around the Fountain featuring amazing lyrics right off the bat from Morrissey. He's a very unique songwriter, very unique writer and lyrics, writing in first, per first person narrative quite a bit. Of course, Johnny Marr writing all of the guitar parts and the music. And I believe Morrissey did come up with the vocal melody lines. So, I mean, they were just a match made in heaven. They took it all back to the more straight ahead pop guitar. Mike Joyce on drums, Andy Warwick on bass, Morrissey on vocals, Marr on guitar, adding this whole new element of guitar playing, taking elements from like Roger McGuinn bird style, adding more like post-punk style along with that, like kind of a Honeyman Scott edge. Incredible album. My only, my only, um, I would say my only bad thing about this album is the production. It's a little stiff and I enjoy Half of the Hollow just a little bit more, the versions on that record, but a fine album. Great lead off track. Reel Around the Fountain from 1984. <clears throat> from 1982, this is their debut album, this Australian band. This is their debut album here in America. It's just titled The Church. The lead-off track, The Unguarded Moment, is an amazing pop song. It should have been way more huge here in America. It, it got real scant airplay, but great, great, perfect pop track. Great pop, guitar pop sounds throughout the record. <clears throat> Too Fast for You, For a Moment We're Strangers, Tear It All Away, Don't Open the Door to Strangers, Bel Air, Sisters, Memories of the Future Tense, and Is This Where You Live? Near perfect album here. And what a great way to start it off with the unguarded moment. The UK counterpart of Skins and Heart. It's a good album, but I think the uh, the US version just has better songs and better, um, yeah, just a better listening experience. Great lead off track from 1981. Sorry, Ma, forgot to take out the trash from the replacements. The track called Taking a Ride. This is where it all started for the replacements. We've got 18 songs on here with... Lots of just punk styles, thrash. They throw in some blues too. They throw in some cool ballads like Johnny's Gonna Die. Paul Westerberg from the, from the get-go is pretty much writing great, great songs, but writing them more in a thrashy style. He would later refine that songwriting in later albums, but yeah, a great debut from the replacements. And I love, love, love taking a ride. I almost said hitching a ride. This is from 1981. 1984, Great debut album from Aztec Camera, Highland, Hard Rain. The song is called Oblivious by Roddy Frame. The lead singer there, lead songwriter. More kind of acoustic alternative pop music. Nevertheless, very, very strong all the way through. And Oblivious is a great pop song. From Aztec Camera, from the album Highland, Hard Rain. If you don't have this album, search it out. It's fantastic. From 1982's The Days of Wine and Roses by the Dream Syndicate. This group was part of the so-called Paisley Underground. This is a great, great album, though. And the track that opens the album is called Tell Me When It's Over. This great, slashy, psychedelic, noisy uh, guitar track with some very Lou Reedish vocals from lead vocalist Steve Wynn. Great guitar playing from Carl Prakota. Bass playing from Kendra Smith. She does a song in here called It's Too Little Too Late that sounds actually very Grace Slickish. But this is a great debut album and a great opener. I've always loved the song Tell Me When It's Over from the Dream Syndicate. This came out in 1982 on the Slash Records imprint. 
one of my favorite all-time EPs, and this is the first time anybody ever heard this band, apart from their their single that they released on their own. I'm talking about R.E.M.'s Chronic Town, the song Wolves Lower. First time I ever heard this song, I, I was blown away by Peter Buck's style of, of arpeggio guitar playing. The arpeggio playing on Wolves Lower is outstanding. Of course, of course those weird, odd lyrics from Michael Stipe, that catchy chorus. Incredible song, Wolves Lower, one of my all-time favorite R.E.M. songs. And if you notice, this album was signed back in 1985 during their Fables of the Reconstruction Tour. But I saw them at the Greek Theater. There's Bill Berry, the drummer's signature. There's Michael Stipe's signature right there. And if you could see it, I don't know if you could see it, is Peter Buck's signature right there, written with a pen. You can't see it that well. But this is a great, great EP. And Wolves Lower to me is a great, great opening track. It switched to 1989 for a great opening track off the Stone Roses debut album, I Want to Be Adored. This is a really, really flawless record here featuring like elements of kind of uh, psychedelia and shoegaze. And this is just one of many, many great tracks. I love I Want to Be Adored. This came out in 1989. A band that's very, very influential on guitar acts that came after them. So the Stone Roses, I Want to Be Adored from 1989 off their debut. How about the Bangles, All Over the Place, their debut album, the song called Hero Takes a Fall. This is a great pop track from um, uh, Susanna Hoffs and uh, got a little bit of airplay back in the day. And this is a really strong retro 60s alternative album here. This is before they became huge with Manic Monday. And I remember they were playing at the Palace back in 84, and I remember it was sold out. We went to go get tickets, and it was sold out, so I never saw them during this period. But love that song, Hero Takes a Fall, from all over the place, from the Bangles, from 84. <clears throat> Another great one from 1985 is Just Like Honey from Psycho Candy from Jesus and Mary Chain. This is one of the most squealing, most um, intense albums ever. I mean, you really, really your ears could be punctured by some of the sounds and feedback coming off this record. Great, great record. Got to be in the mood for it though. But Just Like Honey is such a great, great pop single. It's also featured in Lost in Translation, that movie that came out in the Zero Zeros with um, Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray. So again, Just Like Honey from Psycho Candy from Jesus and Mary Chain. How about Icicle Works, Whisper to a Scream? Now that is a great opening track to this fine album here. Their debut from 1984. This album has a lot of great tracks, not just the single, Whisper to a Scream. Great song called In the Cauldron of Love, Nirvana, Factory in the Desert, Chop the Tree. But um, there's something to this day for me that's really infectious, still really infectious about Whisper to a Scream, and I think it's a great opening track. This came out in 84 from Icicle Works. How about Bone Machine from Surfer Rosa from the Pixies? What a great opening track that is on a great album here that was very influential to the grunge scene. Kurt Cobain was very influenced by this album. They're, they kind of started the whole like soft first loud chorus thing, the Pixies, which Nirvana and every other band from the grunge era picked up on and overdid. But here it is done well by the Pixies. And not only is Bone Machine a great opening track, the whole album features amazing tracks like Where's My Mind, Broken Face, Vamos, I'm Amazed. Important album here, important album here from 1988. Surfer Rosa from the Pixies, opening track Bone Machine. How about 1981's Damage by Black Flag, the song called Rise Above, some early Henry Rollins here. And check out this here, this little sticker here. This was back in the day when they stuck stickers on albums. As a parent, I found it in an anti-parent record. Of course, this has like TV Party on it, Six Pack. Great, great, great LA band. I think they're still playing or maybe they stopped playing under with a different lead singer a while ago. I'm not sure, but um, this is their, I guess this, this is what you would call their masterpiece, Damaged, Black Flag. Rise Above. We're going to rise above. Another great one, too, from L.A., one of L.A.'s greatest bands from the 80s, early 80s, early to mid-80s. Um, the Phone's Off the Hook, But You're Not, from X, from the Los Angeles album from 1980, leading off a 
perfect record, produced by The Doors' Ray Manzarek. A lot of great songs on here. Nausea, Johnny, Johnny Hit and Run Pauline, Sugar Light, and of course they do a great version of Soul Kitchen by The Doors. But uh, Your Phone's Off the Hook But You're Not is an amazing opening track. I remember being at a Moby Disc Records in the early 80s, seeing this on the wall and hearing that track and going, wow, it sounds like Grace Slick and Paul Kantner. And immediately I had to get this album because I love that kind of sound, those, that what they're putting out there, John Doe and Exene. Sounds very, very much like Paul Kantner and John Doe. And then you add Billy Zoom to the mix and it's like a punk Jefferson Airplane. Great stuff. And then last but not least, have a little ska. I always love this album. Talk about perfect from start to finish. Mirror in the Bathroom from 1980 from I Just Can't Stop It from the English Beat is a great pop song. And what a perfect record too. I think they're still playing around. I think it's just Dave Wakeling now with a bunch of backup musicians, but he's still out playing around, playing at festivals. And I think he was playing in Agoura, California, just down the street from me a few months ago. So there you go. There are some great opening 80s alternative leadoff tracks. Throw some of yours in the comments section. As always, thanks for watching. Please press subscribe. We'll see you very shortly. Take care. Bye-bye.